So why isn't the media reporting on any of this, right? This we we need to understand. It's the media's job to explain everything. I'm just I've already explained to you now. Obviously, that's their job. They need to explain what's going on here. And that's where you start to see once again the Gates Foundation influence. You see, over here, twenty million dollars to the BBC World Service Trust. Now this this is a headline 2011. But just more recently, and you can find these grants on the Gates Foundation's own website to verify and fact check it for yourself, where they are currently serving out two major grants, which amount to over $5 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through BBC Media Action. And we have the, the Daily Telegraph, also currently serving out a major, a major grant from the Gates Foundation of over $3.4 million. Then NPR, the National Public Radio, they are also currently serving out a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, you know, we have a prestigious publication for French and African audiences. You can see uh, over here, they are currently serving out a grant and they've received well over $3 million since 2016 alone. The Guardian, right? In the past, The Guardian, I mean, you've noticed in this presentation that I've used some of their articles to expose the dodgy practices of GlaxoSmithKline or Pfizer, but now they are definitely silent. Well, the Guardian is currently in partnership with the Bull and Melinda Gates Foundation. Through this website over here, it's, it's like a shoot-off of the Guardian. It's called Global Development. And you can always, you must just look closely, guys, and you'll see Global Development is supported by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So when you're reading articles on the Guardian, you need to look for that in the corner. Well, they're also in partnership with GlaxoSmithKline, which probably explains why they aren't doing the exceptional job they've done in the past at exposing the current practices of GlaxoSmithKline. And then they're also in partnership with the IFPMA, right, the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association. So again, we're seeing this, the tentacles, the influence, just it's all over the place. Then over here we have uh, the European Journalism Center, which is heavily financed by the bull and Melinda Gates Foundation, usually financed, in which they give grants to different organizations and journalists. Over here, for example, we see the number of grants were awarded to uh, Society in France. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but that's in Germany. There were two in the Netherlands, CNN, which all of us are familiar with, and then Ellie in the UK, and then the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, which I find to be interesting because they did a, f a fantastic job in 2009 exposing what was going on the potential conflicts of interest between the vaccine manufacturers and the advisors in the World Health Organization, but now they're just completely silent. And I mean, I just wondered to myself if it could be because of that. Now, if you take an actual closer look at this program that the Gates Foundation is, uh, is working with and giving the grants to through the European Journalism Center, it's called the Innovation and Development Reporting Grant Program, what you find, guys, is just all kinds of uh, organizations. Now he gives the grants to journalists, but these journalists are affiliated with all kinds of media outlets. I mean, it's 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 crazy when you see the influence that the Gates Foundation has in all of this. So, for example, over here we have the Independent, uh, Reuters, Al Jazeera, BBC News, the Telegraph, Huff Post, National Geographic, Wired, Rolling Stone, CNN. Uh, Financial Times, Du Spiegel, Channel 4 Television, The Economist. It's, it's just all over the place. Of course, The Guardian, as we already explained. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them. There's Reuters also, Vice. But it's, it's really, it's crazy, guys. And you can find all this information out on the website. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to make it very clear that if you take a look, I haven't obviously <laughs> investigated every single project these people are working on who received the grants. But if you look at the work, some of it seems really noble and, and legit, right? So, so I don't want to make it out to seem that all of these journalists are like, you know, they're on the take and they have sinister intentions. I'm sure they really believe genuinely and earnestly in what they are doing. But if you take a closer look, like for example, I check this out. One of this is one of the grants, and all the information is available for those who want to check it out a bit more. Where they worked on this called Medica Mentalia, two vaccines and they focus on vaccines and of course that invariably is to promote Bill Gates view of what should be taking place in the world so he's again he's making investments guys people think he's just the guy's very clever he is a brilliant businessman absolutely brilliant at what he does I mean he's conniving he's he's insidious he's he 
damn right sinister in my opinion. I mean, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. This cat is a predator. Okay, he looks like Mickey Mouse, but inwardly he's a wolf. And um, you can see they won awards here, yeah, and, and so on and so forth. So invariably, he he's promoting his agenda and his outlook. And here's another example, just to further reinforce my point, where through the Gates Foundation, they finance PBS, an education program through PBS, and what they do is they promote Microsoft's interests. So he's, he's a clever businessman, guys. It goes deeper than material profit alone. Okay, we're going to still get into that. But my point being is, he has an agenda. When he's giving his money, it's not because, oh, you know, I'm just a nice old man, I'm going to help the world. No, he has an agenda. Okay, there's, there's something, he has a purpose, he has a motive. And then over here we see also Gates Foundation Viacom partner for quote-unquote message placement on TV shows. And Viacom is the parent company of MTV, VH1, Nickelodeon, and BT, and then also CBS News, CNET, ZDNet, and Comedy Central. And one of the projects that they worked on together, as you can see over here, <laughs> just to show once again how influential the Gates Foundation is, on, uh, on the program, the very popular TV show ER, where George Clooney, Mr. Hollywood A-lister George Clooney, he had his return on ER. Well, this was actually financed and <laughs> the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation quote-unquote helped to develop the script for that particular show. So, I'm merely pointing this out so you can understand how prolific, how ubiquitous, <laughs> how almost omnipotent the influence of the Gates Foundation is. It's, it's absolutely insane, guys. I mean, you think you're just watching ER and you're being entertained. Oh, there's George Clooney. Well, they actually have a subtle message there that you probably aren't even picking up consciously that they are putting there. And like I said, in my book, guys, I go into a lot of detail about this because it goes, it, it goes much deeper. They, they know these little mind tricks. And if you don't know them, guess what? You are easy prey. And unfortunately, most people don't know them because our education system is not an education system. It's an indoctrination system. It's another story for another day. But essentially, you need to learn how to defend yourself from these influences. And you're going to partially, I hope that you have partially learned some of that in this because awareness is the first step. But you'll learn more about that in the book. And yeah, also through uh, the Staying Alive Foundation, which is the MTV's founda foundation, they are currently serving out a grant for the Bull and Melinda Gates Foundation. And then beyond them, they, the Bull and Melinda Gates Foundation is also in partnership with Viacom through this program called Get Schooled, and that's where they focus on education. And I'm not going to get into it now, but the Gates Foundation is also involved in educating society. And he's also got huge investments through the Gates Foundation. Again, they have huge investments in Group Televisa. And Group, or excuse me, Group or Televisa, you can see over here, amounting to over $97 million. This is, from what I understand, the most influential media outlet in Latin America. So again, influence, influence. And then also you're in Africa, right? See over here. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has signed off on a $4.7 million grant to promote data journalism in Africa. And then just to quantify this and put it into context to understand just how, how far reaching the Bill Gates Foundation is, because this is just what I managed to dig up. I'm sure it goes so much deeper, but this helps to quantify through Professor Magda Kanitza, her book Journalism Without Profit, in the section of Who Holds the Purse Strings. She explains that around $300 million a year, okay, $300 million a year is used on media projects, is used by the Gates Foundation. That is just a massive amount of money, guys. Do you, do you realize the amount of perception control you can buy for $300 million? A lot, okay, a lot, absolutely a lot. And then we also have, of course, Big Pharma's role in this. Never, never to be underestimated in anything that it does. Big Pharma, you can see from this report back in 2008, they spend more on advertising than they do on research and development, which is no surprise, given what we know about the Big Pharma industry. And the significance of this is wherever you see the advertising, you know that that television station is receiving money, all right? 
And then beyond that, if we look at, let's say, for example, CNBC at their, uh, at their board of directors, at their board members, we see once again this, this influence, right? The, the, <laughs> the tentacles. So yeah, we have Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's a contributor at CNBC. And he's also a current director at Pfizer. And beyond that, he's also a former FDA commissioner. So earlier I explained about the FDA commissioners having their links to the pharmaceutical industry. Well, there's another one right there. Then we have Joseph J. Wonk. He's the executive vice president and chief financial officer for Johnson & Johnson. And then he's a current member of the CNBC's Global CFO Council. And the same with Robert Davis. He's also a member of the Global CFO Council. And he's the executive vice president and chief financial officer for Merck & Company. So these are just obvious conflicts of interest. Why is CNBC not reporting on this stuff? Well, do you think when they've got board members like that, that are making decisions about what the company is going to do, they're going to actually report on the criminal wrongdoings that I've shared with you thus far? And then Thomson Reuters, right? Reuters is considered to be one of the most prestigious news outlets out there, undoubtedly. Well, if you take a look at their board members, it's a similar scenario. He was actually the former CEO but he, and he is currently the chairman of the board of directors, but he was the former CEO, he stepped down just recently, James C. Smith of Thomson Reuters, and he's the current director at Pfizer. So he's sitting at, he's, on the, he's the chairman of the board of directors at Reuters, and then he's also the current director at Pfizer. And we have Thomas H. Gloser, he's the former CEO of Reuters News, and he's the current director at Merkin Company. And then Manvinder Singh Banga, who's on the board of directors for Thomson Reuters and GlaxoSmithKline. These are the decision makers. They, they decide the direction of the company. Do you think that they are actually going to allow their, the other financial interests that they work for, the big pharmaceutical companies, be exposed? No, obviously not. Come on, guys. Then if we look at the Thomas Reuters Foundation and who is supporting them, who's giving them, uh, who's funding them, who's financing them, who do we see? We see the Gates Foundation. And like I said, the Gates Foundation is just it's all over this stuff, guys all over this and uh, that is so significant because Reuters is considered the number one and the most popular international digital media brand in Europe so it has huge influence right huge influence and then for anybody that wants to understand a little bit more because I can't go into all of it now I want to focus obviously on the topic in question of how dodgy the media is because since its inception the establishment media has been there to mislead you to misguide you okay you can learn more about that in this blog that i wrote called fake news kings 20 plus times the government and media cnn bbc fox etc got caught brainwashing us and i mean i go into many many different examples 